Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at some malicious smart contract code that is used to steal money from the user using a little bit of social engineering and playing on people's greed. Now, I was looking for some front-running code last night because I wanted to take a look at how the front-running box were working at a code level, and I couldn't really find any legitimate code, but I started seeing a bunch of scams. So I figured we would go through some of that code so you can protect yourself by auditing a contract before you deploy it when you're looking to do something in this space. This is a very, very simple contract, but it'll get the point across. So the first thing I did, I was looking for an example of, you know, how to do some front running code. And I started seeing all these videos, you know, huge profits, new front run bot. So I started looking at these and it was essentially this guy going through some code, but while he was going through it, it was all lies because it, it was smoke and mirrors. He wasn't actually talking about the code that was there. So let's take a look at what the actual code is and dissect it. If you scroll down, you're gonna see a ghost bin link. I already have that opened up here. Now, if you grab this code and toss it into an editor and take a look at it, you're gonna notice some things. So I'm gonna scroll down a little Take a look at right here, pause the video, and think about what's interesting about this code. Now, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more, and you tell me exactly what's interesting about this code before I go through it, because there's a lot of things wrong here. All right, hopefully you notice a couple things. Now, first thing you'll notice here, all of this code is commented out and it just keeps referencing something called manager. Kind of like, you know, malware does. When you download a dropper and you start looking at the code for the dropper, most of the code is kind of like BS code to disguise the real code in there and kind of obfuscate what's going on. This is kind of the idea here. It looks like there's a bunch of code things that are happening, but really most of these things are commented. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just remove all of these comments. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift P and I'm gonna say remove all comments, which is a plugin I have installed. And now I just have the regular code here. And if you wanna install this actual um, plugin, it's just right here, remove comments. I just hit Control Shift P, typed it in, and it just kills all the comments in there, right? So if we hop back into the code, and let's clean this up a bit here. So there's like about, looks like about 300 lines almost of code, but most of it is just nonsense. It's just calling this manager over and over and over again. Honestly, we could probably just get rid of this because we don't need it, we know it's calling. So we'll just scroll all the way up here till we see something other than this manager. And we see a payable function. So that's interesting. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's keep scrolling up and delete all these managers out of here. So we just wanna get a look at what's actually here, what's the functionality actually doing when we get rid of all the nonsense code that's not actually gonna execute. Okay, so we get to a function. So if hit back here, this is basically all that's happening in the contract, right? We have a function called action. It's public and it's payable, meaning you can send money to it. And the only thing that it actually does outside of that manager, which we'll take a look at, is it says payable manager.uniswap deposit address. Don't know what that is. We could search for that in here. So we'll say control C, control F, and search for that. There's only one instance of that, so that's probably from an import. Dot transfer address dot this dot balance. So that would be the balance that's inside this particular contract. So that's interesting. If we scroll up a little more, we see receive external payable. So there's some kind of way to pay money into this function. Uh, and we see a constructor. A constructor's got a token name, token symbol, and then this manager, new manager. What the hell is this manager and where is it coming from? We see this contract Uniswap uh, V2 front box is the name of it. And then we have a manager manager right here. So this manager has to be coming from some kind of link that's coming in here right? And it looks like it killed my links when I did remove comments. So let's take a look at the actual code again and see what those actual uh, links were. It's probably because the two forward slashes in front of the link, it thought it was a comment. 
So let's take a look at that. So we have three, one, two, three, four. So let's just paste those back into our contract so that they're highlighted. So let's go back here and we'll say paste. And now we have these back. So this is saying pancake swap, front runner deployer, GitHub, Uniswap v2 core, Uniswap v2 core, Uniswap v2 core. So this might be like a legitimate, you know, Uniswap thing. We could check that out. Um, copy and paste. I'm not sure if it's a legitimate one or not. It's not really the interesting one, but it's a good idea to take a look at everything. So we hop here, it looks like it might be the legitimate uh, Web3 framework. So I think this is the actual legitimate one. We'd have to compare it somewhere. It's got a bunch of developers. Um, it's got a bunch of projects. It's probably legitimate. But we also have some other stuff in here. And the, the thing I was saying before, like what stands out here? And the thing that stands out to me is that we're importing from IPFS, which I believe stands for Interplanetary File System. It's like an online database of sorts where you can store stuff and apparently they're importing something from it. So if we go to that, and if we go to that with say Firefox, it actually won't load. Um, it just doesn't bring anything up. Um, it'll bring up just that ghost spin and stuff like that. But if we say, strip off this import and we just click. It starts searching, but it, it doesn't actually bring it up. And if you click this, it doesn't actually load because I was trying this earlier, just kind of timed out, it wouldn't load, right? But if we bring this up in Brave browser and we type it in here, it'll actually pull it in because Brave Browser is like a uh, blockchain type of browser, right? Oh, we gotta take the um, import off of there. So I'm gonna search that. Now I already searched it, so it's gonna bypass something, but when you do it, it's actually gonna ask you if you wanna use a public network or something else, and then it'll load this up. Just choose public network and it'll load this up. And what you see here is you see a contract. So it's actually importing a contract into this. So it's saying contract manager. So that's where the manager is coming from. And we also saw this Uniswap deposit address within our code here, right? So if I hop back into my code, we see manager, manager, manager equals new manager. And that's all coming from that manager that we're importing in the IPFS. And then we see here manager, which is that code, Uniswap deposit address dot transfer. So let's take a look at that code again. And we'll see that function Uniswap deposit address public pure returns an address. And the address it returns is this one right here. So this is probably the attacker's address. And so when you call this function manager dot Uniswap address, all it's doing is returning this address. So when it returns that address, it replaces it in here and it says payable this address dot transfer. So instead of message dot sender dot transfer like you'd have in a withdraw function, it's actually doing a send to that address that's hard coded in this contract but it's actually selling this contract as something that's gonna make you money doing front running. And if you guys want a front running video, let me know. I plan on doing a whole DeFi series, but I can throw together a quick front running video guys for you guys. Um, that way you understand what exactly this contract is supposedly doing outside of what it's maliciously doing. But what's happening is we're importing manager. We're gonna create you know, some manager variables, call in the function and say manager.uniswap address, it's gonna replace that the hard-coded address, it's gonna transfer the balance of this whole contract. Now, if you look at that YouTube video, that YouTube video is telling you deploy this contract and then send money to this contract address. Once you send money to this contract address, hit the action button and it's gonna start doing front-running attacks and it's gonna accumulate money for you and you'll make a bunch of money every day, right? So what actually happens when you hit this action button 
is that you're going to import his address and transfer the balance out of it that you put into it that he told you to put into it that's going to help your front running attack to make money. So I just kind of wanted to walk through this from a code level because I didn't see anybody doing this. And so that it kind of gives you a starting point to notice some things in contracts before you start running them. Because, you know, it's kind of like malware. You know, there's contracts out there and there's malicious people doing social engineering and they're attacking users in this way via greed. Hey, you can make a lot of money if you run this. You need to send a little bit of money, you'll make a lot of money. But in the background, really, they're just liquidating the contract and taking all of your money. So I hope that was helpful. Hopefully this format is uh, good. Um, also, let me know how the audio is. I'm running a new microphone, I'm playing with a video camera tonight. If you like this format, let me know. If the audio is terrible compared to the last audio, also let me know, because I'll get a new microphone. I'm kind of playing around with things. Um, but anyway, uh, hopefully you learned something here. Um, if you did, you know, like, comment, and uh, subscribe. Catch you later.